Hi guys, Jordan with Motion Array, and today we're gonna be showing you how to get the most out of your logo reveal templates and give you some free templates to get you started. Logos are essential if you want your brand or company to be able to be recognized by people with just a simple image. And the way you think about this in context of video is usually with those logo reveal openers that show your brand while also doing some sort of flashy reveal with your logo. These are a really great opportunity not just to show your logo in an interesting way, but also to be able to communicate non-verbally what your brand is actually all about. You can easily tell that this brand is epic and intense, like maybe a film studio that produces medieval style movies while well, this one is far more likely to make you think of a modern tech company. And because every brand and person's needs are unique and different, we're not actually doing a tutorial on how to get a unique custom effect for yourself because, well, there's kind of limitless opportunities to what we could do and no guarantee that it's actually what's gonna help you in specific. And not to mention, Final Cut Pro isn't exactly cut out to do intense motion graphics or logo work and especially nothing in 3D. So instead, what I am gonna be doing is showing you how to get the most out of any logo reveal template that you download. And if you want a free template to be able to follow along with, there'll be a link to that in the description below. So the first thing that you're gonna to wanna to do is install these templates by copying the folder of the actual logo reveal and then pasting it into your movies, motion templates, then generators folder. And this will allow it to be visible and usable in Final Cut. And once you find it here in your generator section, you can start to use it by clicking and dragging it onto the timeline. So now the big question is, how do we actually get our logo into this template? With your template selected, go up to the generators inspector here. This is where you'll be able to work with your template in depth. And here you should see an image well with the downwards arrow telling you that you can drop your logo here. So all you have to do is click this image well and then go over to your media library and select the logo you want to include. And there you go. Uh, oh, well, ugh. That brings us to our first tip. Always make sure that your logo has a transparent background, preferably with a file format that can read transparency, like PNG. This is crucial if you want your logo to be able to act dynamically, as if it's actually a physical thing in its own space and not a 2D image on a background. So if you're able to re-export your logo with a transparent background, preferably in a PNG file, great, go do that. Or if somebody else created your logo for you, go and ask them to be able to re-export it for you with those specific requirements. But if you're sitting there like, ah, I don't know what to do, this is literally all that I have, there might actually be a workaround for you too. Drag and drop your logo onto your timeline by itself. Now, depending on what your background of your logo is, you're gonna wanna go into your effects and search for either here for colored backgrounds, or Luma here for backgrounds that are black or white. Let's assume that you've got a black or white background. All you have to do is drag and drop the Luma here, and by default, the dark portions of your image will be made transparent. Awesome for if you have a black background with a white logo. But if yours is white, then you can just hit the invert button to reverse what's transparent and what's visible. Sweet, so now you can slide the roll off until you get the look that you want. And if you find that your image is a little bit washed out as a result, you can go up to the color inspector and bring down the shadows and bring up the highlights to add contrast to your image, helping your logo to pop like it originally looked. Great, now all you have to do is stretch this image out a long ways and highlight your image and create a compound clip with option G. What this does now is bring up the image as a file to be able to be added into your image well. The whole goal is to actually get it up here in your library, so you can delete the one on the timeline if you'd like. Click the well, and then click your new compound clip that you made for your image, and you're good to go. Your new logo with a transparent background. Awesome. Now that you have your logo actually in your template, you actually have most of the work done for you. There's gonna be other things that you can change, like colors of different elements, as well as changing up the text if that's incorporated into your template. You also may have a template that uses a much more elaborate setup like particle effects, which you'll be able to control from this generator inspector as well. The nice thing about using templates like this is that they have an insane amount of flexibility, letting you make it truly your own. But sometimes you'll be working with a template where, for example, your background is the same color or shade as your logo. Normally, you'd be able to change the template colors themselves, but in the event that you can't do this, or you have a white background and you wanna keep that white, if you don't have any branding restrictions keeping you from changing the colors of your logo, you can actually make it stand out in a really simple way. You're gonna search for a new effect, negative. Drag and drop this onto your image. This will invert any color or luminous property in your image, making your whites black and your blacks white, and also switching up any other colors in between. 
Now you can create a new compound clip again and switch this one out in the image well of your template. And boom, you've got a new logo that stands out a lot better. And if you've got colors in your logo instead of black and white, a great substitute option for the negative effect would be to go up to your color inspector and select a new hue saturation curve. Here, slide up or down the hue versus hue slider at the top, and you can see that your colors shift around. This can help you to get really quick color adjustments to make your image pop. And you can even select out specific colors that you want to change while leaving others untouched. And lastly, anytime you work with a template that's been created by somebody else, there's a chance that it's going to push your computer a lot harder than normal, especially if you're working off of a laptop, especially a much older laptop. So it's going to be really helpful for you to know how to make Final Cut Pro X run faster and smoother. The first thing to check here is under the View tab of your viewer. Scroll down until you see if it's set to better quality or better performance. You want better performance. Next up, switch up your library to List View instead of having images. And if you have any video scopes visible, hide those so that they're not trying to analyze any of your footage. And on your computer's main hard drive, try to make sure that there's as much space as possible to move around. But you're going to want to make sure that there's at least more than 20 gigabytes available. And guys, that's just been a bunch of different ways that you can have a much better experience using logo reveal templates inside of Final Cut Pro X. I really hope you found the video helpful. And I really hope that you liked the logo reveal templates that we featured in this video. If you did, feel free to check those as well as all of the logo reveal templates we have here at motionarray.com. Thanks so much for stopping by, and I can't wait to see you in the next video.